right, so I'm hoping you can see and hear me. If you can, let me know, that'll get us started. My name is Jesse. I'm with Decker Truckline, and welcome to our April 14th edition of our Q&A. So every Tuesday at noon central, we come here, we're live, and we are um, presenting you an opportunity to ask your questions, get them answered, and of course give you a little bit of detail about what's going on here at Decker, give us some updates, and some industry updates as well. So that's what this is all about. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. Let me know where you're at and what you're up to. I'm sure you are busy, just like most of our uh, professional drivers out there right now. You guys are on the front lines, keeping everything rolling and keeping everything going in the right direction. So thank you very much for all that you do. Our job here is to continue to support you and to help remind you and I guess really remind the public that the biggest part of all of this is uh, what you guys have been doing for us as professional drivers out there on the road. And if it wasn't for you, then we wouldn't have anything that we have now and we can sure be grateful. So thank you guys so much for, for all that you do. Hey, Jackie, good to have you, bud. Thank you, thank you. In Ohio, Jackie's in Ohio. Well, awesome. Thanks you guys for, for being here. Um, we're going to talk about distracted driving, something that we can all experience or we all do experience, whether we want to or not, at some level. Now, we all know that cell phones are one of the major distractions out there, but we'll talk about the three causes of accidents, the three top causes of accidents here in America, and give some ways of how we can avoid distraction or at least limit distraction as much as possible. Uh, before we dive in there, I do have a few updates that I wanted to answer, some questions that have been asked, and um, I'll get those answered, and then, of course, some of the, um, the protocol that's being required in response to some of these questions. So, um, if you're ready, let's dive in. Don't forget that to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, and I got a little sticker here. There we go. Subscribe. There you go. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't already, click that bell, that way you'll be notified every time we go live, which by the way I said is every Tuesday at noon central. We do have videos that come out regularly as well um, on tips and tutorials on how to how to tarp, how to do the refrigerated unit, um, so much more, pre-planning, pre-tripping, uh, all of that. So take time, watch some of those videos. If you are new to Decker or want to know a little bit more about Decker, there are several videos on available positions here, as well as the type of equipment that we have. Now, I failed you by not providing some pictures that just came in to me today. Uh, Robert Kelly had graciously sent over some beautiful pictures. He got his rig all, all cleaned up, all shiny and everything. And then he sent some pictures of the interior as well, which I would have really loved to share, but I'll get those to you because you know, we'll have to show them next week, I guess, because they're, they're absolutely beautiful. Might even do a slideshow for you guys to, to share, um, maybe on Facebook. So if you're not taking a look at our Facebook, if you're not following on, on Facebook, then please do so. That's facebook.com backslash DTL Inc. So we're all over the place. If you want to find us, we're here. <laughs> so easy enough. We are here. Um, let's address a couple of the things with distracted driving. And, and then I'll talk about some of those updates that you guys had, had asked as well. All right? All right, so distracted driving. Um, actually, listen, the three top causes of accidents are uh, distracted driving being number three, speeding being number two, which is usually a big concern. We talk about speeding a lot back in, oh, usually around August when it's the, the inspection blitz that is focused on, on speeding. There we go. And then drunk driving. Drunk driving is another one. That's actually the top, uh, the top uh, distraction or top cause, I guess, excuse me, of accidents in the United States. So you've got, you've got uh, drunk driving, speeding, and then distracted driving. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, as well as Autism Awareness Month. And um, with distracted driving, we can easily, we see distractions nonstop. Like I said, the cell phone is the number one distraction that's out there and it's an easy fix. You put that sucker away, put it where you can't see or reach it during, while you're driving so you don't have to worry about it. 
or you've got those mounts that you can go ahead and have it mounted in front of you um, where on the dash itself and then you've got your hands-free device so it's a one touch or you know no touch so you don't have to worry about it hey eddie what's up what's up good to have you so traffic safety experts classify distractions in three main categories you've got manual visual and cognitive your cell phone cognitive why because you are manually handling manually handling that manually there we go <laughs> It didn't sound right. Anyways, you're manually handy, handling the phone itself. That's the first type of distraction. And then you're, you're uh, obviously you're still looking at it in order to, to work the numbers or to dial whoever you're looking for or find the app you're looking for. Um, your, your eyes are elsewhere. So, and then you're thinking about it. You're thinking, where on earth do I need to find this? How am I gonna get it? Uh, whatever, it, it could be a brief thought but you're using all three types of or classifications of distractions, which gives a whole bundle of that much worse when you're going down the road. You already have the job or the responsibility to go, going down the road, checking out anything that might be in your way, um, driving defensively and reacting to whoever else is out there on the road or whatever else might be jumping into the road, um, deer, or elk, I mean, if you're in Montana, <laughs> or you know or, or how anybody else reacts so you've got all of those distractions coming at you don't place another distraction especially one that you can avoid that being the cell phone and plus remember we are setting an example for others not only are you professional drivers so you're held at a much higher level than the rest of the u.s but you are also setting an example for possibly your passenger if you have a youngster um, with you in the truck, um, then yeah, you're setting an example for them as well. Uh, speaking of ex examples, we've got some pictures that were submitted here. Um, Hunter. Hunter is riding with his uncle Josh, Josh Diggs. You can see Josh's uh, truck there in the background. Um, but Hunter, you know, he, he's got his eyes out there helping Josh out on the road, making sure that um, anything that's coming about is you know, they're prepared for and, and just another set of eyes. So that's one great thing about having a passenger versus having, uh, you know, being on the phone and talking to him, even if it's hands-free. Oh, I threw this picture in. This is Thomas Remington's uh, Easter dinner. I had to throw a few pictures in there too. You know, absolutely yummy Easter, Easter dinner. Hope you guys had a wonderful Easter, by the way. Hope you did. Where, where'd you spend it? Um, family doing all right? Were you able to go home or were you playing it safe and keeping the distance? Your social distancing so that uh, everybody's okay? Right, right? <laughs> hmm. Yes, visual distractions are those where you're, focus, you're focusing your eyes off the road. Um, Anna's got a couple definitions out here for you. Cognitive distractions, when your mind wanders away from driving your ta the task at hand, which at this point is driving. Um, or if you're just, you're thinking hard at something else. Uh, Eddie, Eddie says absolutely held at a higher standard and should be absolutely. And we're proud of you guys because you can hold that higher standard than the rest of us. So jazz truck and hello, Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> uh, yes. Like I said, uh, Hunter's up there. So 48 states have actually banned texting. Montana um, hasn't necessarily banned texting statewide, but uh, they banned it within city limits, at least within the larger um, towns in Montana, they, they have banned it. Missouri is the second exception, where 21 years or younger, um, it's banned, but 20, if you're older than 21, then uh, you don't fall under that ban for texting. But like I said, of texting, I mean, texting itself is such a huge distraction and over 80% of older adults are actually texting while driving. We're the ones trying to set the example, but we do a terrible job if we're doing the exact opposite of what we're trying to teach. So even though, even though the teenagers or the young adults have, um, you know, may have more accidents involving texting, the percentage of adults, older adults texting is still very high. 
So just stop doing it and we can avoid it all together, right? That's my solution, just stop it. So set a good example. Hey Amy, parent-teacher conference. Well, with the parent and the teacher, you're holding both hats, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Peter, Peter Belk, thanks for uh, hopping on. Um, he says, maybe off the topic, attending orientation on the 27th, how's the flatbed freight looking? Well, we're staying consistent and we're staying up there and that's what we like to see. Um, depends on who you're talking to and how great it is. I was talking to, uh, well, we have a couple guys doing lease purchase. Actually, the picture I just showed you of Josh Diggs, um, he's staying really busy. I love to see that. He's continuing to tell me success. Um, also was talking to Kenny or Ken and, uh, and he's doing fantastic. He's getting the miles. He actually was ranking in. I think he told me this was as of Friday, Thursday or Friday last week. Um, he told me that he was at 3,800 for the week. I'm trying to think if that, if it was Thursday that he told me, cause he was finishing a load that was going to put him at 3,800 for the week. So you know what? That is not the average for our miles for flatbed, but we definitely have some guys at, that are working hard. Um, both of those guys actually stay out a little bit longer. You're looking at about two to three weeks at a time. Um, home every other weekend in most areas of our flatbed. Of Actually, let me rephrase that. In our over-the-road flatbed that's based out of Bessemer, Alabama, then two to three weeks at a time is, is a little bit longer than most, most everybody comes home every other weekend or in some cases every weekend depending on where you live. So Peter, I'm not sure, I didn't see your app so I'm not sure what your home time is because I'm not sure where you're at. But um, yeah, the miles are there. Average, the average isn't that high. Like I said, it, it's not at that 3,800 but we've got guys that are doing it. So if you're wanting the miles and you manage your time well and you, you're working hard, those miles are there. I can tell you that for sure. So, so L is it Pajero? Pajero? I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, forgive me. It, it's my own ignorance there. Um, any changes to the lease purchase? I worked for Prime from 2015 to 2016. I have not driven since then. Flatbed division. How long of training would I de see? Well, if, if you only drove for that year's time, then um, you will need to get some recent experience. You'll need to get nine months of recent experience before we can move forward. However, um, if you have several years, I'm frozen, aren't I? If, we, if you have several years of experience prior to that, then we can probably work with getting you um, with a trainer and then from there that trainer would you know, go with a, a trainer for a couple weeks to get you back up to par. And of course you'll have the orientation, which is a week long for orientation and then a flatbed you'll have uh, a little bit of securement tarp training too, which will be a few more days. Um, training depends on how you do. If you don't have, if you only have nine months of experience, then um, that's recent, which is our minimum requirement. Um, then, you know, getting, going with a trainer maybe for a week or so would do it, but uh, I don't expect you to have to go with a trainer if you have those nine months of experience. If you have um, tractor trailer experience that's recent, even though it wasn't over the road, that may qualify you to go with a trainer and, and get you up to par with that. I hope that answers your question. I'm, I'm making sure. Now the lease purchase program, to answer that part of your question, we require a year of over the road uh, tractor trailer experience. Um, you do need to qualify for that for the most part because we want to make sure that your scorecard, which is one of our bonus structures and our bonus plans, um, is at least 900 or above on a regular basis. You need to have at least 90 days as a company driver before you move on to a lease purchase. And the lease purchase does have a $1,500 down payment requirement. Um, but in order to qualify, the qualifying standards are based off of that scorecard, which is a point system up to 1,000 at 900 or above is what we wanna see on that. Um, Amy said, <laughs> in regards to student parent teacher conferences. Uh, pretty much she's both, but they tested the kids before spring break and the whole no school stay home stuff. Yeah, that's that it is a adjustment, isn't it? I'm getting used to that myself. Jazz trucking, I caught the tail end of the changing lanes discussion. Changing lanes, um, uh, like lane change violation. Is that 
what you're referring to. Um, lane change violations such as uh, that, that would be a violation that we wouldn't be able to work with for at least three years if you have an erratic or improper lane change. I'm hoping that's what you're referring to. Clear it up for me, would you, if, if I'm just talking off the random cuff there. <laughs> Peter says, good news. Yes, we were talking about the, the freight. Absolutely. Good news. That's right. Every two weeks out, out of Bessemer. All right, so basically home every other weekend if that's what you're, you're going for. Um, but yeah, you're, you'll be doing well. And if you manage your time well, like I said, miles are available. They will keep you busy, which is fantastic. Um, Amy says, anyone else have a frozen video? Ah, you did, but I fixed it. There you go. <laughs> and I bet she is. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So jazz truck in the video was frozen for me as well, but it looks like, yep, I fixed it. Sorry. That's where the black went in. Uh, is it snowing again over here? No, it's not. Um, funny story though, yesterday, one window, it was snowing. Actually, it was that window. It was snowing like crazy, whiter than I'll get out. And here it was sunny. It was colder than I wanted it to be. But Amy says, it's snowing in the mountains and the wind's cold. Of course it is. Grr. <laughs> Jazz trucking. It's been freezing for the other videos as well. Yes, I don't know. It likes to give me a hard time. I uh, thought it was about changing lanes. I was mistaken. It was about distractions. Okay, there you go. See? The distraction right there. No. <laughs> so the distractions that I was naming are the top three, actually the uh, top three accidents uh, that I had mentioned, um, the causes of accidents here in the United States are number one, being drunk driving, number two, speeding, and number three, distracted driving. And because it's Distracted Driving Awareness Month, that's why we're kind of hitting on this a little bit more than normal. Um, cell phones, huge distraction, trying to avoid that. And I wanted to um, have you use either a, a Bluetooth device to avoid um, the multiple touch on the screens or flat out just put it where you, you can't see it or hear it so that it isn't a distraction. Um, what I also mentioned is of the f of 48 states, there are two that don't have texting bans or have mediocre texting bans. Uh, Montana and Missouri are two states that have, they do have the bans, but they're um, like Missouri is 21 and younger, that they they have a ban on texting. Whereas anybody older than that, there's no ban on it. And then for the, um, Montana, the city limits, they have texting bans, but not outside of city limits on the interstate, which I think, I don't know, I think that's crazy because you're going at a faster speed, so there should be a ban there too, but um, that's my opinion. You know, I, I figure we can avoid more accidents. Let's do it. We have a lot of accidents here in Montana. Mm. Amy says, we just found out he's far too smart and will be more ready for kindergarten as a reader. <laughs> I love it. Good. That a boy, Kate. Um, Jazz says, not your videos. It's YouTube in general. Yeah, I'm going to go with that too, Jazz. I, that's what I'm hoping. Lots of people are using YouTube during, during this crisis because they have more time. They are. They're not only using it for, um, you know, for entertainment, but I think they're also using it as a way of communicating, trying to bridge that gap from social distancing. Because right now, uh, well, we all know social distancing is is tough you know because it it's hard on your spirit because a lot of you know we've got drivers our professional drivers who are usually like to be on their own they appreciate being on their own and then we have other individuals who have to have the constant um the like constant company i guess i don't know how best to say it but they they like to have people around them at all times well in those cases the social distancing can be an issue for them. Um, but yes, that's, uh, that is true. I think a lot of people are using YouTube as a way to connect with other people as well as a, a pastime um, for, for them as well. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Um, Anna says, people are as impaired when they drive or talk on a cell phone as a, when they're they drive intoxicated and the blood alcohol is a limit of 0.08%. It's impressive. I didn't, I had no idea. Impressive in a not good way. Um, but I had no idea before researching some of the distracted driving information that that was the case. 
So, you know, and, and the number of adults that not only preach you shouldn't be you shouldn't be texting, but do the exact opposite. And even though they're saying, yes, I know it's bad, um, shouldn't do it, you know, almost 40% of them still do it, still use a, a cell phone. And using a cell phone while driving increases your, um, the, your time off of the road by about 400%, 400%. And a lot of times, if you think about it, if you think about when you're on the phone, when you're talking to somebody and you're trying to multitask, which by the way, multitasking is just a myth, but if you're trying to multitask, your eyes are usually up, you know, while you're thinking, you're usually up in the air. Um, so yeah, you're not even looking at the road. So absolutely, you're 400 more times to have your eyes off of the road when you're on a cell phone. It just does. Just does it. Uh, sending or reading a text message takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. You know what you can do in five seconds? Going down the road at 55 miles an hour, you can go the whole length of a football field. If you're going straight down the football field, that's one thing. But when you could have any curve or anybody coming at you during that time frame, that throws in a whole lot of scenarios. So uh, keep your eyes on the road. Please don't look down at a text. And um, like I said, just keep those distractions at a minimum. No reaching, no holding, um, except for the steering wheel. Hold on to that steering wheel. You know, if you're if you're having getting a drink of pop or water or whatever you're taking a drink of um, legally, if you're getting a drink and that other hand needs to be on the steering wheel, because I do understand that you're gonna have one hand off. You know, if you're a smoker and you're smoking, you shouldn't have one hand on your pop or your drink and another in with your cigarette. You need to have at least one hand on the steering wheel. Ideally two, the majority of the time, you know, until you just take that break. But um, definitely no hamburger in one hand and a drink in the other, absolutely not. Uh, no dialing, no texting, no reading. Keep your focus. Uh, Jazz says, I get nearly run into at the shoulder or nearly into the median at least two to three times a week because of those who text on their phone in their hand while they're driving. You know, and absolutely, especially when you're a professional driver and you can see down into those those uh, four wheelers, you know that what they're doing, whether they're putting on makeup or they're, they're texting or they're reaching behind them, trying to um, get their kid to stop horsing around or, you know, maybe they're trying to get a sweatshirt or something like that. Um, but whatever the case might be, you gotta keep them moving, keep them. Keep them from distracting you and you just keep moving and, and doing what you're supposed to be doing. So yeah, Jazz, I bet you're right. And like you had said earlier, you know, we are held to a different standard and rightfully so, um, but it doesn't mean that they make it easy on you <laughs> to hold yourself to that. Um, can I play my saxophone and drive? Nope, <laughs> that's, that's two hands off the wheel. That would just be bad as texting, absolutely. <laughs> What kind of songs do you play on your saxophone? You know, what kind of what kind of music do you usually play? <laughs> uh, Jackie says, I would never do that. I hope not. Uh, what are distractions other than cell phones that you can that'll take your eyes off the road? There's cell phones and saxophones. <laughs> uh, jazz trucking, looking at billboard attractions that are not relevant to driving. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of, there's billboards left and right. You're coming into town there. They are there to not only entertain, but to grab your attention. Uh, like I said yesterday in yesterday's Facebook live, we have the, the uh, attention span of less than a goldfish, which is like seven seconds. And quite embarrassing at that. So because our attention spans are so minimal, uh, we've, there, are, there are things everywhere trying to catch our attention, trying to keep our attention, whether it be on the cell phone, if it's being advertising on the billboards, um, whatever, radio, serious, you know, um, YouTube, anything, they're all trying to grab your attention. Do your best to, to keep it on track. You know, 20 years ago, our attention span was about 15 to 20 minutes. Now it's seven seconds, less than seven seconds, which is embarrassing. Yes, indeed. Mm. Peter says, Anna, food, dropping something, being impatient. Oh, goodness, you hit it on the, on the nose there, didn't you? Being impatient, of course, grabbing food, 
and uh, if you drop something, you, you need to let that go. Let, just leave that, unless it's under your foot, that could uh, prevent an accident. Try and get yourself to a safe spot to grab that. But absolutely, you know, if, if you drop something, leave it be. Wait till you get stopped to, to pick it up. Don't be chasing it with your hand or, or something. Um, Anna says, that describes me to a T. Yep, I hear you. Jazz Trekking says, uh, so, you know what? I just realized how dumb I am. Uh, I asked you what kind of music you played, as you said, the saxophone, and then, of course, in your name, it's Jazz Trucking. Oh, my gosh. I'm glad you put you guys put up with me sometimes. Uh, jazz says, I saw a guy playing a musical instrument while I was driving. No way! Swing jazz. See? Yeah. See, I'm kind of a moron sometimes. Jackie says, mine is 3.5 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Your attention span is 3.5. Yeah, mine is probably less than that, too. <laughs> Anna, personal glue, uh, grooming, lip gloss is my friend. Yeah, not while you're driving, though, right? Not while you're driving. Um, also says, my daughter's adjusting the vehicle temp or other controls and me switching it back. Yeah, no, no, no. Not doing that. Lots of lots of distractions. You know what? You can lose a bundle of money besides the fact that you're putting your life at risk, somebody else's life at risk, and you know it could be the load, could be whatever, but your life and somebody else's life at risk. Um, you're also taking the chance of getting hit really hard with a massive fine. As a driver, you can get up to a three thousand dollar fine just for having a cell phone in your hand or something distracting in your hand. Three thousand fine. Twenty seven. 2700 um, fine. Sorry. What? No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's just for the violation alone. Then you think about some of the other costs. If you are, um, if you are getting, I don't know, um, if you're in an accident because of you using a cell phone, not only do you have that $2,700 or $3,000 fine, but then you also have probably the deductible for the accident or whatever other costs occurred during the accident that you are now responsible for. So very expensive. And as a company, we are very protective of our ratings as well. You think of CSA scores, you think of safety ratings. I know as Decker Truckline, we are very protective of ours. And we can't work with anybody that has had a handheld device in the last three years or something that would be caused as a distractive driving because as a company, we could be fined $11,000 for a mistake that you make. $11,000 just for that mistake. And again, that's just the fine. Crazy, right? Yeah, that'll make you think twice about, about grabbing anything. I hope, I hope that would. Ken, Ken says, hey, how you doing? We're doing great, I was just talking about you, actually. Um, Peter, let's see. Peter, you were asking about miles. Ken is actually the one that I was talking, one of the guys that I was mentioning um, with flatbed miles. So he can he can tell you more. Um, Amy says, uh, Anna, that's what the back seat is for. That's right. Jazz Trucking says uh, that's a violation of the Eighth Amendment, excessive fines clause, but that's for a good lawyer. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Expensive. It, ridiculously expensive. I shouldn't say that. Let me rephrase that. Uh, not ridiculously expensive. It is super expensive. But for what that what you can be causing, the type of accident, the deaths that can be causing because of it, um, it's not excessive because of that. Texting while driving causes over 1.6 million accidents in a year a year, just the year alone. Absolutely crazy. And 20% of drivers are, are admitting to not only texting, but sending emails. So we think about a text and you think about how quickly you can do a text. Pretty, some people pretty quick, could be a K, could be a little bit more. It's not worth your life to take the few seconds to text while you're driving. But now put it in the instance where people are emailing while they're driving. Email is considered a slower means of communication. They don't expect you to get back immediately if they're emailing you. Leave that be. Leave it. Check it when you're stopped. Do not put yourself in jeopardy. You know, you might, you, you forget how much other people think of you. Your life is very valuable. 
not only to, well, I hope to yourself, but to your loved ones, to your friends, or your family, don't, my goodness, please don't put it at risk. And I'm probably preaching to the wrong choir here, but um, please continue to look after those who are on the road and, and be aware of those who are being distracted. Uh, Anna says over 84% 84, 84 of drivers recognize the danger for cell phone distractions and find it unacceptable that drivers text and send email. Ha! Huh? Nevertheless, 36% still do it anyway. They're still like 84% realize it's stupid, but then, then they still do it. That's smart. Jazz Trucking says, uh, you don't want to have a collision and have a witness to tell the law enforcement that the driver of the big rig crashed with a cell phone in his hand because it'll look extremely bad in court. Yeah, extremely bad in court. And like I said, the other think about the other damages that you've done. Hurting somebody. Nobody wants to hurt anybody. That makes you feel horrible. Anna says, just one second of your attention can take yeah, can change a life of yours or somebody else's forever. Absolutely. Um, Amy says, totally off topic, but your shirt, red or orange? Orange! Although my cup, you like my cup? Amy, I uh, have this for you. Red. Uh -huh. uh, Jackie says, y'all have a great day. Yes, Jackie, be safe. Be safe. Um, all right, I wanted to address a couple of things. I have lots of statistics to give you, but... Before I get uh, too far into everything, I do want to give you uh, an update with some of the questions that I was asked about this COVID-19 and how it is affecting Decker and how it's affecting our freight. Um, you guys have all been, I think yesterday during our Facebook Live, we had a question about that. And so I wanna make sure that I'm addressing it. Okay, okay, here you go, COVID-19, red red there <laughs> okay so let's talk a little bit about that first off and foremost we've seen very little if any effect or you know reaction I guess to um, this COVID-19 with our freight so the impact on us has been very minimal which is fantastic and a lot of that is because of the vast um, contracts the freight that we have and keeping us moving so that's we have seen very little impact it's great however i have been asked about specific locations and if you do have additional uh, in, you know requests or want more information on that let me know i do want to however let you know of some of the requests by some of our our customers in or demands i guess um, they're going to be new policies that are set in in response to in response to the COVID 19. So for all of you who are hauling refrigerated, a lot of customers, not only refrigerated, but I'm, I'm hitting on one specific, um, Tyson plants are requiring that you wear a mask. And if you will please check your emails, please check your emails because as our company drivers here at Decker, we have sent out some information from Tyson about, um, about some of their new policies. So I'm going to read to you, just in case you don't check your email, but I'm gonna to read to you this. Um, review the attached letters, which these are the attached letters um, from Tyson Foods. Their correspondence give the important details of the new requirements effective immediately. In short, these terms, term requirements. Effective immediately. Tyson requires all team members and visitors, that's including drivers, to wear face masks, coverings, entering all premises. It will be the responsibility of the non-Tyson team member to provide their own face coverings. This may consist of medical grade mask, dusk mask, and face covers such as bandanas. So in response to that, I do wanna let you know that we've got face masks available. If you need one, please contact Tammy O'Toole, contact your driver manager, let us know that you need one so that we can work together and get those in your hands. If you stop at one of the terminals, pick one up, um, if you are stopping and getting one yourself somewhere else and need to be reimbursed, we'll reimburse up to $10 for um, hand sanitizer, um, wipes, hand sanitizer, and then um, the face masks. Okay, so but we, we do have hand sanitizer at all of our terminals now, so they are all equipped. If you have a bottle, please bring the bottle in so that we can refill that. And because we, we were limited to the number of bottles that we were able, but we did get, and um, in all honesty, we're limited to the amount 
of hand sanitizer that we were able to, to get, but we made a lot and we have it. So if you need it, let's get it into your hands. We want you guys safe out there. The whole idea is to make sure that we are your support and uh, keeping you supported here. Uh, I missed a few comments, I think. Anna says, drivers are the lifeline to society and it's critically important that we work together to meet the needs of the public in, in a safe and efficient manner. Absolutely. This is our one of our ways that we're trying to make sure that we're um, keeping you safe and, and everything. Um, Amy says, are they handing out any for those who may not have it due to the shortage? We are handing them out. We are providing them. Um, Tyson, however, is saying that they are not. And actually, further in this letter, they are telling them that, telling us that we will be um, turned away in some instances. So, all Tyson team members, essential visitors, contractors, and drivers with a temperature of 100.4 or greater will not be allowed on the premises. These requirements, or this requirement, is intended to protect everyone within our supply chain. All previously mentioned critical personnel, including drivers, will begin to have their temperature checked in order to secure the safety of all personnel supporting efforts at the Tyson facilities. Temperatures will be taken by scanning or touching the thermometer to the head. It will take less than a minute of your time and Tyson is encouraging everyone to take the temperature before arriving at the facility if possible um, to avoid uh, additional contact. Effective immediately upon checking into any Tyson facility, you will be asked the following questions. Have you, someone living in your household or intimate partner or someone you're caring for been diagnosed with COVID-19 or any contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19? Now remember, they are doing their best to make sure this, the safety of their employees and others are protected and this is, this is what they've implemented to, to help. Um, have you or someone living in your household household or intimate partner returned from or made a connection with CDC level three or level two country in the last 14 days. Um, these countries include China, Iran, South Korea, Italy, and Japan. Do you currently have or have you within the last 24 hours any cold or flu symptoms including a fever of 100.4 or more? If any of these que questions are answered yes, then the following will occur to minimize exposure. For live load bound, uh, inbound and outbound, the driver will be turned away. So there, that answers your question on, I will kind of your question, Amy, there. For live loading inbound and outbound, the driver will be turned away. For drop loaded inbound and subsequent outbound, the driver will be allowed to drop the load trailer, but then immediately must exit the premises without outbound shipment. Again, the goal is to minimize the exposure. Um, Amy says, I have none of that. I have allergies. No, <laughs> I was in response to what, what their reaction would be. Um, Jazz Trucking says, can it be possible for Decker to purchase types of supplies like gloves from Amazon when they are not selling them to people like us? Amazon will not sell certain surprise supplies to anyone other than they're not selling them to us. The, one of the hardest things that we've been trying to get our hands on are the hand sanitizer, uh, the masks. I mean, we, we flat out worked hard to get those into our hands. We had to make the hand sanitizer because we couldn't buy it. Um, we couldn't, not only could we not buy it in bulk, but we could buy it individually was a minimum of like one, which wasn't going to get us anywhere for all of our drivers. Um, so no, we, that's why we're doing the reimbursement is because we were only able to get so much. However, we will look into getting some of those from maybe other distributors because like I said, we're, we're having a hard time getting our hands on anything. Supplies in response to COVID, such as the hand sanitizer and stuff like that, those have all been quite difficult, um, quite difficult to get our hands on. So I didn't realize that my screen froze again. Sorry, you guys. How come, why? Um, Jazz Trucking says, businesses that are serving on the front lines, the trucking industry is considered as front line. Yeah, yeah, we are definitely considered front line. Um, however, they just don't have, they don't have it. They don't have it to sell us. They don't have it to give. And that's, that's why we can't get it um, with the distributors and stuff. Hospitals are having a hard time getting a lot of it. Um, also front line. So yeah, it's, 
not easy. That doesn't mean we're not going to try and get them for you. Our job is to, to do our best to get them for you. But as of right now, you're distracted. I'm always distracted. Especially when the darn video freezes. So like I said, this is all of these are going to be distributed. Um, we've got them at the terminals right now. <laughs> uh, Amy, absolutely. So yes, facial covers, they have to be done. Please, you guys, read the email that we sent out. Um, it'll actually, now that I think this, this is going to be sent out this afternoon. Um, this email is. And uh, stay up to date on all of our COVID-19 communications to all of our not only our professional drivers, but also some of our, our well, all of our in-house people as well. Um, so with, with all the partners, proactive measures throughout the company to reduce the spread of coronavirus as COVID-19. If you guys have questions, all of those will be answered in the email that I'd be, sent, that I'd be sending out, that I'll be sending out. Please um, do your best to, to review that. Um, and again, they, they emphasize that uh, critical personnel, including drivers, will begin to have their temperature checked and secure to safety all personnel supporting efforts in the Tyson facility. Temperatures will be scanned, um, touching the thermometer to the head. It'll take less than a minute. So that they wanted to, to remind you of that. Um, yeah. So these, these uh, protocols have been put into place by them. Um, for your safety as well as theirs. So it's not just for their safety. Um, but I do want to remind you that how this, how other companies, or not companies, but how some of the customers, um, facilities, the plants, how they have been impacted um, has been had very little, if any, impact on us because we've either had reroutings for from customers or loads from other facilities, or it may not have impacted us at all. So it's nice to know that uh, the freight is still there, even with adjustments that are being made, whether it be for us or for those, those different companies that are out there. If you have any questions, feel free to contact one of the recruiters or talk to your driver manager about it. 888-668-0698 will get you the recruiters. So thank you, Anna, for, for posting that. But remember, this email will be coming out this afternoon with more details. So um, continue to, to be safe out there. All right. Um, let's talk about a few different opportunities that we have here at Decker. Uh, we've, Peter had mentioned some of the flatbed. We do have flatbed opportunities based out of Bessemer, Alabama and uh, Bessemer, Alabama and Fort Dodge, Iowa. So now those are the locations that you'd be that you'd be dispatched out of. However, we hire out of multiple areas. So if you live anywhere from Texas to the Carolinas, we have some flatbed opportunities there. Um, we do have a uh, dedicated position out of Texarkana, Arkansas. So if you have a position there. We can give you some more details on that. It's flatbed. And it's home on the weekends. 888-668-0698 for more details on that. Uh, for the Midwest flatbed, we have guaranteed pay if you live anywhere from Mason City, Iowa to Fort Dodge, Iowa, up to Chicago, up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, back down to um, Mason City. So anywhere along that route, we've and a couple of other locations, but we have uh, the guaranteed pay of thirteen fifty a week. Again, getting you home on the weekends. And when I say getting home on the weekends, I'm talking either uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, coming in, and then leaving out either Saturday or excuse me, Sunday night or Monday morning for usually a, an early Monday morning delivery. Um, you live in Oklahoma? Well, Oklahoma, I've got flatbed and refrigerated depending on where in Oklahoma you live. So the refrigerated is usually two to three weeks at a time. Um, flatbed's about two weeks, probably possibly two to three weeks at a time as well. Um, with the flatbed, you're running coast to coast and uh, the pay is anywhere from 47 to 54 cents a mile, depending on your experience. 10 cents of that is per diem, so you're not taxed on it. And then you'll get a penny raise after 90 days and then every year on your anniversary. And then with the uh, refrigerated out of there, you've got two different refrigerated options. You have the one where you'd be running more of the Midwest. So for the most part, it's Denver East. A lot of up and down the Midwest. So um, Chicago, well, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, Kansas, Missouri, all busy areas as well as Texas and Oklahoma. 
those are going to be the busiest areas that I just named. But going east, we've got freight in parts of, um, well, definitely the Atlanta area, parts of PA, some Maryland. So there's, there's definitely freight that goes out east, too. Not a whole lot in the New England states at all, but rare if, if any. And then we have the coast to coast division that actually runs mostly west of the Mississippi. So yes, it's coast to coast. You can see any of those 48, but the majority is going to be west on that one. So refrigerated is going to pay anywhere from 40 to 50 cents a mile, depending on the division and the experience level that you have. Again, 10 cents of that's per diem and you get a penny raise after 90 days and every year on your anniversary. Um, Jazz says, I want more dedicated opportunities to open up between Southern California and Florida, especially during the winter. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> no, I get you. It makes perfect sense to me. I live in Montana. If I can get away from the, the icy roads, I get it. Um, however, we don't have anything dedicated that goes from Southern California to Florida right now that would be undedicated. We'll have to keep our eyes open for additional routes though, huh? Um, speaking of California, so currently California isn't an area that we currently have um, opportunity out of. To give you ideas of our western or over the road refrigerated division, areas that we do hire out of right now are Missoula, Montana. So if you live within Missoula, Montana, uh, 50 miles of there, we can get you home possibly even every seven to ten days, but two to three weeks, sure, if you want to stay out a little bit longer, um, that's the norm. Uh, we can, w with being close to Missoula, we can argue that we can get you home a little bit more often as well. Uh, Richland, uh, Washington, Pasco, Washington, and Kennewick. There we go, the Tri-Cities. We can get you home about every seven to ten days there as well, as well as the two to three weeks out. Uh, Spokane, Washington, two to three weeks out of there. And all these areas that I'm naming, fi figure a 50 mile radius. So if you live within 50 miles of there, we can hire and get you home every two to three weeks. Um, other areas, Las Vegas, Nevada, I've got a couple positions out of there. Um, Phoenix, Arizona, they've got a position out of there, which can get you home about every two to three weeks. Salt Lake City, Utah, we've got a few positions out of there that can get you home every two to three weeks as well. Um, Denver, Colorado, another location, 50 mile radius. Now Denver also falls within our Midwest option, so if you wanted to run up and down the Midwest mostly towards the east, that's going to be another option for you. Um, where else? Uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, another 50 mile radius for the over the road refrigerated division. So feel free to ask if you have any questions. Best people to call are the recruiting department <laughs> for answers on where we can hire and how often we can get you home. 888-668-0698. Amy says, Jazz, I agree. Warm weather would be nice. Amy was trying to convince Stephen to move to Alabama yesterday. So I think she's in agreement with you. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Um, but you do live in a beautiful part of Montana, Amy. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? We also have uh, our Midwest refrigerated. We have guaranteed pay if you live in Kansas City, if you live in uh, Minneapolis, if you live anywhere from Albert Lee, Minnesota to Chicago along I-90, or uh, Omaha, Nebraska to Chicago along I-80, and you wear along those routes or within those routes, we can get you home not only on a weekly basis, but also with a guaranteed pay of $1,250 $1, a week. That's minimum, by the way. That's that's your, your protective layer. You can make more than that based off the miles that you ran for the week, as well as your pay, which is based off of your experience. So yeah, you can definitely get more than that. And Zach, the driver manager for that division, he loves to rack up miles for you if that's what you're looking for. You just gotta let him know that's what you want and he'll keep you moving. So we like it. Um, Amy says, no Alabama, but maybe soon we'll get into Missoula. Maybe, maybe, beautiful, awesome. So those are some of the different positions that we've got available. We also have a short haul position out of uh, Fort Dodge, which is flatbed. And that is available if you live in Fort Dodge, Iowa. I'm frozen again, aren't I? If you live in uh, Fort Dodge, Iowa, if you live in, um, where else? Omaha, uh, Sioux City. Those are all different locations that we can get you home on a uh, multiple times a week, actually. Not necessarily on a weekly basis, but multiple times a week, as well as on the weekends. So there you go. 
Uh, Rooster. Well, hi, Rooster. Um, it says, how about lanes out of Texas? Well, it depends on where in Texas you're at. So let's say, I'm going to give a couple scenarios that we've got. If you live in Amarillo, we've got refrigerated out of there, mostly the Midwest refrigerated. We also have our Western, like over the road refrigerated as well. Um, again, the lanes for the Midwest refrigerated up and down the Midwest towards the east, so Denver East. Uh, the over the road refrigerated based out of Missoula, Montana is coast to coast, although a lot of it is west coast to Midwest, west to Midwest. Um, so areas of Texas, say Dallas, I've got refrigerated, Midwest refrigerated, I've got um, over the road refrigerated out of Missoula, Montana, I've got over the road flatbed out of Bessemer, Alabama. So I've got all different options. Two to three weeks out uh, is the norm in, the, on, in those areas and uh, pay a, again based off experience. So let us know what division you're more interested in and then we can give you specifics based off of your amount of experience. We do require a minimum of nine months experience and, and all of the divisions. So same goes for the Houston area. So if you live in Houston, we also have refrigerated over the road in Midwest, and then we also have the over the road flatbed. Um, another example, San Antonio area, we we're gonna have some refrigerated there. You're probably looking about three to four weeks out at a time there, but uh, that's gonna be more of the Midwest refrigerated in the Texas area, uh, Southern Texas. That's about as far south as we're going right now though. Amy says, we'll have to go run online today, starting in about five minutes. All right, Amy, you stay safe. Good luck dealing with the teachers and, and the parents. <laughs> Be safe. That's right. She's, she's wearing both hats. That's why I say that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Rooster, if you have more questions on that, feel free to give us a call. You can call us directly at 888-668-0698, or you can call us at... Um, or call us. You can apply online at drivedecker.com. Drivedecker.com. So excellent. Okay. Um, I see that I'm I'm running up on uh, on one o'clock here Central Time, so I don't want to keep you guys too much, but I definitely want to make sure that I'm answering all of your questions. I have time to continue to answer them for you, so I won't hop off if I still see them coming in. Um, otherwise. I will uh, let you guys be for the rest of the day. Um, <laughs> she has drunk and says, be safe. So with lease purchase, I was asked about lease purchase a little bit earlier today um, on the live. And yes, we do have it in both the refrigerated and flatbed divisions. It does depend on where you live because there's some states that we can't work with it, um, but there are also states that we, we do offer it. So let us know and we'll give you more specific more specifics. There's about seven. 13, 13, 17, somewhere in there, states that we don't offer the lease purchase program. Um, that being said, a lot of those areas are not currently within our hiring area, so it wouldn't affect you anyway. If you live in the Midwest, we have a lot of different options for you. We're really heavy within the Midwest, within the hiring area, because we've got several different divisions that overlap. We've got, uh, like I said, the refrigerated, we've got the flatbed. We also have van. So if you live anywhere from um, Lincoln, Nebraska to Gary, Indiana on I-80, we have van opportunities that'll get you home on a weekly basis. But you do need to live close to the I-80 there. Also, if you live in Atlanta, Georgia, Anderson, South Carolina, Hartwell, Georgia, we also have van. You're looking at about two, maybe two to three weeks out at a time for the, the more southern, southeastern location for the van. Um, but we do have it. So it pays anywhere up to 50 cents a mile, depending on your experience. Now that's the starting pay. You still get an extra penny raise after 90 days and every year on your anniversary. There's a $2,500 bonus on your one year anniversary for refrigerated van and flatbed divisions that are over the road. And uh, it, for van and refrigerated, you need a minimum of 110,000 miles for, within your first year. And then you'll be paid that in one lump sum on your one year anniversary. And for flatbed, um, 100,000 miles minimum within the one year and pays again $2,500 all in one lump sum on your one year anniversary. So Jazz Trucking says, do you have the Midwest to East Coast dedicated opportunities? Right now, no. No, we don't have anything dedicated uh, Midwest to East Coast. Um, 
The most dedicated that we're going to have right now is the van position. It's semi-dedicated though. It's not even full dedicated. And that's, like I said, running anywhere from Lincoln, Nebraska to Gary, Indiana. Now the reason it's dedicated, semi-dedicated is because uh, the initial load is going to be for the same customer. You're hauling a lot of pet supplies coming out from the plant and going to multiple locations. Whereas on the way back, it could be a, multi a variety of loads, uh, different customers that you'll be hauling for to get you back. Um, regular Hunts Point market runs? No. Nope. We do not. Um, could be some, but definitely not. Regular is, is far from that. Um, Annis gives the details on the $2,500 bonus. If you need more details on that, she's got it. It's really basic. I mean, it's just, you need 100,000 miles for flatbed, you need 110,000 miles for refrigerated within a year's time. So that's your requirement. Um, also bonuses, we have several different bonuses. You can actually check them out online at drivedecker.com backslash blog. And on our blog, we've got, got all, you know, we try and give you updates on the COVID-19 as well as our driver referral program, which can give you a whole lot of extra money in the wallet, um, as well as the performance bonus. Our performance bonus is called our scorecard bonus. It's going to be based off of your miles, your fuel efficiency and idle time, CSA points for the month, preventable accidents for the month, um, and on-time driver service failures. So, oh, sorry. That's uh, my alarm. Squirrel. Uh, distracted, right? So those are the, um, the basics that we have for some of the bonuses. We also have a smart drive bonus, which can get you an extra penny per mile. And that's going to be um, based off of the now the smart drive bonus is based off of our smart drive system, which is a safety feature that we have in the trucks. It's a combination of inward and outward facing event controllers, um, recorders. So there are cameras in the truck that um, that will oh, well, it's part of the safety. So that's part of the smart drive system. If you have 20 points or below, then you'll get that extra penny per mile, which is the bonus for the month on that. Now I should mention, I should have double checked to get the score for you on who, how many people got the smart drive score, smart drive bonus last month, as well as the, the scorecard bonus last month. But you know what, we're gonna talk about that next week. So I'll give you details on that next week. I'll have those numbers for you. But I gotta make myself a note so I don't forget. So, um, but yeah, I'll have those numbers for you so that you are well aware of them. Scorecard and a smart job. Anybody else have any questions? No? All right, um, we will be here next Tuesday at noon central. We are live. And like I said, we'll be talking about our smart, our smart card, our smart card, our scorecard and our smart drive bonuses as well as some of the other incentives that we have. There are a lot of incentives I should mention that as recruiters, we don't necessarily advertise or, or tell you about, but that you're like, ooh, surprise, awesome. Um, to give you an idea, some of those are, uh, we've got, if you have a clean inspection, it's $50 extra for clean inspections. So you'll get a violation-free inspection um, bonus. So we have those every month. We have, uh, what else? We have the, the what, sorry, Jazz, I just saw it. Smart, smart card is just score drive. <laughs> That's about what, uh, that is basically what I said. Um, other bonus, other like bonus features. Uh, this week, actually, I was just notified of the second quarter uh, drawings. So for those of you who are the first, the top 10 or the first 10 to finish your quarterly safety training, then you also get incentives that way. So we do incentives throughout the year, whether they're extra, um, they're monetary, let's see, like the $50 um, clean inspection bonus, uh, a lot of the monetary bonuses with the referral, those incentives, the smart drive, the scorecard, or the smart card score drive. <laughs> we also have like the quarterly bonuses. We also have non-monetary bonuses as well that you can win throughout the year for 
uh, driver of the month, uh, driver of the year program type things. Um, the driver of the year, driver of the month are kind of inter or driver of the year, driver of the month programs are, are kind of intertwined with some of those bonuses. And um, there's that as well that are also based off of the scorecard bonus. Um, but there's lots of other incentives that you might not know of. You might find out and you're like, dang, good deal, huh? Yeah, that's, that's our goal. <laughs> our goal is to support you and surprise you with awesomeness. <laughs> All right, I will let you go. I don't see any other questions, but it is just after one o'clock. You guys have been awesome today. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. And I hope I answered some of those questions, gave you a little bit of peace of mind that, you know what? Yes, this COVID-19 has, um, has hit the United States. It is affecting things. However, the impact on the freight itself has been little, if at all, any. And we'd like to continue to see the miles increase and the demands be there for our professional drivers. And you guys are doing a fantastic job. Please stay safe. Follow those, um, what are those? those? Those take five guidelines that they set. Do the five, stop the coronavirus. Um, six feet away, six feet. I know this says three, but you know, they changed it when it got worse. So wash your hands often, cough into your elbow. Um, you know, keep your, your feet at least six feet away from everybody. Um, don't touch anything, don't touch your face, that's all hard. And uh, if you feel sick, stay home. I know you guys are told that and you hear that within the industry all the time, but it's flat out, it's important you guys, your health is important. If you are getting tired, if you are getting worn down, you will need to rest. Just let your driver manager know, explain to them. We all, we're human. If you get worn down, you need to rest. And we understand that. We don't want to put your, your health on the line. We don't want to put anybody's health on the line. But please, rest. Take care. Um, Jazz Trekking says, thanks for being here and answering questions. You betcha. Anytime, anytime. If you need anything else, though, it's 888-668-0698. I'll also respond to the thread as, as comments come in and uh, throughout the week. And so if you put a comment on any of the YouTube videos, I'll respond to it and and get back to you. Same with Facebook, facebook.com backslash DTL Inc. That's the Decker website, the Decker Facebook page, I mean. And um, I will answer any questions that you have there. If you have pictures you'd like to send, send them to that one. And I will share those with the community as well here on both YouTube and on Facebook. Facebook Live is at 4 p.m. Ma 4 p.m. Central Time on Mondays. So Peter says, thumbs up, awesome. Ezekiel, hey Ezekiel, wish you guys would pick me up as a driver, but I live too far from your guys' hiring range. You might need to move. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Well, kind of. Um, if you move, you let us know. How's that? Fair enough? All right. Look at that. They they shot me down. I'm gonna, I need to put something on the screen so you actually have something to see here. Sorry, you guys. Um, yeah, Ezekiel, if you, if you move, you let me know. Washington State has found out that six foot long, <laughs> he needs to move to 12 feet. Yes. Ezekiel, are you in Washington? Because that could change. You know, Washington is a, is a busy state for us. So if, um, if things change here in the next month or so, make sure that you reach out to us because we would be happy to, to help you if at all possible. Uh, Washington State, uh, like I said, Spokane, we are hiring out of. Uh, the Tri-Cities we're hiring out of. Yeah, 12 feet. Keep your distance. Stay healthy. Goodness gracious. Um, speaking of staying healthy, um, the orientation, you know, we've obviously taken the distance into account on that as well. So for those of you coming into orientation, Peter, you being one of them, um, we have definitely taken into account the distance that we need to keep. And so we are, we've um, set up new arrangements um, to protect everybody's health and, and keep you keep you healthy healthy. All right. All right, camera's working again. Um, Jazz Trucking says, we don't want to be sick and then drive into a food distribution facility. Goodness gracious, no way. I'm frozen again. Goodness. Oh well. All right. I think it's telling me that I'm done. Is that what all these... Uh, um, reminders are coming out. I guess we're done for the day. 
you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Please be safe. Don't forget, if you need masks, that you need to get a hold of Tammy over in Fort Dodge or your driver manager so that we can arrange for that. Um, also, hand, getting your hand sanitizer and anything, any other supplies that you need to stay safe. And we will do, we will do our best to get our hands on some of those gloves. I'll be doing some checking on that. All right, you guys, stay safe. Take care.